in the same way, when Christ dies on the cross, God doesn't die. He simply just dies in the flesh. So the flesh is separated uh, temporarily from his essence. And then he resurrects himself three days later. Test the claim. Huh? No, you see, basically, okay, so, so what happened was, my first time at the corner, um, I debated him, right? So I was just talking, he came, he came along, it's like a year ago, he came along and bought some cameras with him, right? Him. Yeah, him, yeah, yeah. Today? I, no, my first time at the corner a year ago, right? He bought some cameras with him, and then um, he wanted to try and like, 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 like trip me up about like an understanding, right, of like how us as Christians um, understand that what we have is preserved, okay? So we talked for about two hours, and ultimately he ran away. And from that day, he doesn't want to talk to me because I challenged him. Huh? No, he wasn't. He wasn't. He was trying to pass me. Right. Huh? Uh, you can try, but he won't come. Yeah. Ultimately, no, that's fine. I, I am not here to, tr to trick you or trip you up. Just to let you understand, as a Christian, we believe that our God is one in essence. Right? So what do we mean by this, right? What makes God God? Like, why is God God? We, we understand that he is all-knowing. He is all-present in some way. He, he knows the end of time. He's been there since the beginning or before there even was time. And he'll always be here. And he's all-powerful. He can do any logically possible thing. He can create the world, create us, the animals. Yeah, but we don't believe that he is three different entities. We believe that he is three distinct persons. What do we mean by this? Not, uh, God is not separate in that there are three um, different gods that come together and form God. But there are three persons underlining realities, right, that essentially um, tell us who God is. And we believe that's the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. They are distinct because they are not one another. So the Father is not the Son. The Father is the uncaused cause. The Son comes from the Father, but in an eternal fashion. So as long as there's been a Father, there's also been a Son. And the Spirit also comes from the Father as well, but again, eternally. And these three have distinctive functions. So the Father wills something. That will is carried out by the Son in the power of the Spirit. So for example, Isa, Jesus, we believe that he is the cause of all creation. It was by it was by him that everything it was designed. The world, the universe, the beast of the of, of the field, of the air, and the flood, and everything, right? But ultimately, we're not telling you to come and worship three gods. We're not we're not talking about like like worship Zeus and then Poseidon and then Aphrodite, which are three separate gods. We're calling you to one god, but who is triune in nature. And people like Mansour want to twist it up and make it sound like when I'm saying God the Father, Son, and Spirit, I am saying Zeus, who is one separate God, Aphrodite, who is one separate God, and Poseidon, who is one separate God. I am not saying that. The three persons share completely in what makes God God. So Jesus is not God. So Jesus is God because he is God. He is God. Because he shares fully in what makes God God. He is the Son, the divine title of the Son of God that has always existed along with the Father. My question is, how can you be God, but also the Son of God? Okay, so the Son, no, no, so the Son, not as in um, you have your Father and then He begets you, right? We are saying that the divine title of the Son means that the Father in His, in his personhood is the uncaused cause, but then from the Father, eternally you have proceeding from the Father or like coming out of in some kind of a sense that we can't fully understand, the Son and the Spirit. So because the Son and the Spirit come from the Father, but are distinct from the Father and are not created, they are also God. That's how we understand this. I didn't really understand the change. So, so my, my main issue is yep. you're saying Jesus is God. Yes. That means he has the, he has the attributes of, of God. God. Yes, okay. absolutely. Yes. So he must know everything. He does. He does. He really does. Yes. Yes. Just as the Father does, so does he. So and it's the same as the spirits. So Jesus knows everything. He knows everything. And then you're going to go ahead and ask about Mark 13 or Matthew 24. Yeah, I know that, yep. but I'm not an expert on the Bible. That's fine. That's fine. But you've heard it before. I know that. 
I know there are quotes in the Bible that says, the Father knew the hour, but yes. Jesus did not. Okay. But now you're saying Jesus knew everything. Yes, right? yes. So it doesn't say it in that sense. It's, so uh, Maybe I misquoted, but... Yeah, yes, but that's the general quote. idea. So Christ is asked about the hour. This is when he is on earth, when the Son has taken onto himself a human nature. So he's tangible, right? He's like a human being. You can touch him, you can see him, all, all, all that good stuff, right? Now, he is still God. Uh, yes, he, he is still God. Because just because, just because God takes on a, a human nature doesn't negate the fact that he's God. Just because you put on a hat doesn't mean you don't know a human being. Yeah, okay? I'm with you. So awesome. he's God, but Great. human form. Great. Okay? Now, finally, God knows everything. And this extends also to, to the sun. The quote that you're referencing goes, Nobody knows the hour, uh, not the angel, not the sun, not the angels in heaven, if not the Father. Okay? So what that means is that... I think there's a quote that says Jesus did not know the hour. No, I don't think that's what it says. Uh, I'll it, check it. I don't it, want to misquote. It, if you want to... Well, there's one in Matthew 24, verse 36. That's one of them. And there's that another says one. Jesus did not know the hour. Well, it doesn't say he did not know the hour. It just says that he said of himself that no one knows the hour. Not the sun, speaking about himself. Not the uh, angels in heaven, uh, uh, only the Father. What that means is that the word that, that, that's being used then, no, does not mean that he's ignorant of the hour. It means that it is not up to him to declare it. And we have other uses. How do you know that? That's just an interpretation. Yes. He did not know means he, he does, he's not knowledgeable. That's, that's, what, that's what you're interpreting, right? From it, right? No, but, but no, as in you need to know something. You know. No, because the Bible... You have power over it. Wait a second. The Bible uses certain words in a... So all, all words have a, um, a descriptive nature to them and also a connotative nature. A word can mean something by definition, but can be used in different ways. In the Bible, the word, the word no, K-N-O-W, is used for sex. As if he knew her, or he had carnal knowledge of her. It is also used for declaration. And it is also used for ignorance. Now, which one of the following was Christ using? Was he talking about having sex? Was he talking about declaring? Or was he talking about ignorance? That's what we have, we have to uncover. If Christ is God, and he has to know everything. So it can't be about ignorance. And it has to be then, by the definition, about the third description, which is uh, declaring something. We can see something very similar in the book of Corinthians. Uh, Corinthians 1, uh, so 1 Corinthians verse two, uh, um, chapter 2, verse 2. The, the, uh, the disciple or apostle Paul says, I chose to know nothing but Christ crucified. Right? Now, when he says that, does that mean that in that instance, he didn't know anything else? His own name, his father's name, his mother's name, where he was, what he was doing? No. Contextually, he chose to declare nothing but Christ crucified. And that is the, is the same uh, notion that we take Christ saying that no one knows the hour. Secondly, Thank if you so look at the interpretation of no in that context, in, uh, declare. Only the Father will declare the hour. The Son has full knowledge of the hour because He is God, as is the Spirit, but it will be down to the Father to declare it because they are distinct in role as well. Like I told you before, the Father wills something, it is carried out by the Son and the power of the Spirit. But if he has all the qualities of a god anyway, yes. and he has all the powers of a god, so it's in his power to declare it, even if that is interpretation. No. And he has the power to declare it. No. So remember how I told you, remember, so, so he's not a god, he is god. Okay? Remember how I told you that the three persons are distinct because they are not each other. So, they are distinct because they're not each other, the same because they share the same essence. Okay? The father, for example, does not incarnate. The father does not appear here as a man. Only the son does. Right? Um, the spirits can dwell in all of us. But the father does not dwell in all of us. Only the spirit does that. So they have distinctions, not only in, we, we call, use the word hypostasis, to mean their underlying reality. They are distinct in that fashion, but all God because they share the exact same divine essence. Is the Father limited yeah. then? Because the Father can't eat anything else. So it's, it's, not, it's not a case of him being limited. That is his distinct role. It's like, for example, uh, it, it, I'm guessing you're a Muslim, right? Is that correct? Okay, okay, all right. Um, in, in other religions, for example, like Islam, right? Um, there's this idea, for example, that Allah wears a veil. And without that veil, um, if he was to take it off, his, his, uh, the radiance of his face would burn creation as far as his eyes could see, right? 
So this is like a, an underlying reality of who Allah is. But then just because Allah can burn creation without this mask on or, the, or, or this veil, does that mean Allah is limited? Not necessarily. So in the same way, just because these, the, the Father and the Son have distinctive roles, it does not mean that they're limited. If for whatever reason it was deemed as such that the Father should be able to incarnate for the sake of humanity, then it would happen. But ultimately, from what we can see in Scripture, the Father does not incarnate, only the Son does. Okay, so he, he is, Jesus has the qualities of God. Yes. And one of the qualities of God is that he's all powerful. Yes. So how is it that Jesus could be killed? God can't be killed. Okay. Except, except if he takes on a human, uh, a, a human. Uh, characteristic or human nature. But then, but then he doesn't have a godly nature. He has he, a human oh no, nature. He does. Actually, he's, he's a god with a human nature. So we nature. believe that he has both natures actually. So in the person of Christ, this is something called the hypostatic union in the Greek. In the person of Christ, in the single person of Christ, you have both the divine essence, what makes him God, as well as the human essence, what makes him a human being. But my point is, Humans and God have very contradictory natures. None Humans can be jealous. They are, they are limited in their knowledge. Okay. They have bad qualities. They have things to be free. They're okay. all powerful. They're not all knowing. Uh, God has the complete antithesis of those qualities. That's fine. But we believe that because of the divine essence being present in Christ at the same time as, as the human essence, then the divine essence perfected the human essence. So Christ was a perfect man as a result. He never committed a sin. And he never went against God. He and is it, God. And, yeah, he exactly. exactly. God. No, so, but you see no. How it's like, kind no, no, no. Of a bit convoluted no. In the way wait a second. Wait a second. He never went against God, as in, he never broke any of the commandments that he had given Moses to give to the people. So, as a man, he was perfect only because the divine essence was working on him to make him perfect. So, even if Christ went to do a sin, he couldn't do so because of the presence of the divine essence. So in the person of Christ, you have two natures. So they don't contradict. Simply the divine exists and so does the human nature as well. And how, I'm sorry, how can he die? Absolutely. He can die only in the flesh. In the same way that you believe that when you die, something lives on after you. You don't completely erase from existence. You carry on living in a form that isn't your, your body. A soul, but it's not the body of God. Huh? No, but in the same way, when Christ dies on the cross, God doesn't die. He simply just dies in the flesh. So the flesh is separated uh, temporarily from his essence. And then he resurrects himself three days later. So how can God die if he takes on human flesh and then dies in the flesh? That's all. Jesus, when he's alive, he was a god. He's always god. There's never so, a time okay, when he wasn't okay, god. Okay, okay. How god for who he's praying to? The father. Sorry, my English. The, fa the father. No, no. So bro, god, he prayed okay. to god. Wait, 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 wait. You no, know no, excuse me, excuse I'll me. Come no, to no, you. it's common sense. Here. I'll come sorry, to you. Sorry, brother. Wait sorry. a second. I'll come I, you, to you said when he's alive, sorry, he's on. a god. So god, he's prayed to god. I so told you. God I'll then come here. to you. Wait a second. Because you're gonna have me repeating myself. I don't want to do that. So wait a second, okay? Wait there patiently. I'll come to you. Don't worry. Anything else? I, I see your point. Your point is that he's made a human flesh form of himself. He's taken on Earth. a human flesh. Yeah, but, yeah, yes, yes, right. but I just, I can't grasp my head around the fact that he's a human, but he has godly attributes. Because he's, he's never been God. But he doesn't God. have the godly attributes. He does. He does because he can't declare the hour and the God can declare no, the hour. No, only the Father the can declare the hour. How God is beaten he by a human father. being? How he's come God, thing God is beaten by a human being? As he's a son, huh? Then he's not the father. So yes, then I, not the same I, thing. no, I said that to you already. Yeah. That Christ is not the father, but he is distinct from the father. I said that already. The father is one person. Be distinct, huh? but the same thing. No, they, they are distinct, and then they fully share in the divine essence of God, which is what makes them God. Brother, he never, never said I'm God. He never said I'm the God. I will I'm come the creator. To you. No, no, wait a second. it's common sense, brother. It's Stop hyper -cool. right there. I'll I come to you. I just want to understand. Okay, I want to then learn from wait. you, brother. Then I'll come to you, brother. It's common sense. Did he ever in the Bible say I am the boss? I am the creator. I am God. Wait. He never say that. It's it's common sense, brother. If he's a God, he never knows the end of the hour. It's common sense, brother. I'm from the land of God. I'm from Palestine. 
Yeah, from land of Jesus. Palestine is the land of God. Calm down. Yeah, from land of Jesus. The whole earth is the land of God. Calm down. He looked like me. No, he didn't. But did Jesus never look like you? Absolutely, yes. So, 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 in multiple ways and fashions. For example, in Matthew 12, he calls. Oh, you're just okay, but in Matthew 12, for example, he calls himself the Lord of the Sabbath. Why is that relevant? It's, it's a phenomenon the Sabbath is a command that was given to Moses by who? <laughs> by God. So how can a mere man, prophet, whatever you think he is, claim to be the Lord, the Lord over a law that God gave man? That is effectively sure called blasphemy or a lie. Yeah, but in the same so way you're if, saying no can have different interpretations and Lord can have different interpretations, it means the messenger of the Sabbath. When does Lord ever mean messenger? For, no ever mean for, for example, I, I, Allah calls himself uh, uh, the Rub, the Lord. Does that mean Allah's messenger or does that mean he is sovereign over something? Okay, thank you. That's all it means. Because, like, I mean, look in the Quran, look in the Bible. Find me a context where Lord implies, like, a, a messenger. Lord implies someone who's sovereign. But in the same way, you've said that no implies something else depending on the context. Yes. Can you find me an example? I gave you one. Can you find me one? In the Bible. In the Bible, in the Quran, where, where Lord means messenger. Okay, well, well, well that, that's what I would say. I haven't come across it. So I would say that the word Lord means sovereign, and the word no, among many other words in the Bible, for example, fear is another one. Like, again, fear is a negative thing, right? It means that you're terrified or you have terror. The Bible talks about fear in that sense. God has not given you a spirit of fear, a spirit of trembling. God hasn't given you that. So if you have it, it's likely an attack from the enemy, the devil. But at the same time, it also says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So is that fear of the Lord the same fear that he talked about that he hasn't given you? No. It's two different kinds of fear. In the second sense, it's reverence. And in the first sense, it's terror. That's why it's saying we Somebody Anything else? I just can't wrap my head around this, the fact that it's God the same can be killed. Yes, in the flesh. That's all. In the flesh. So God never stops existing. God is eternal. You can't kill God even if you try. But, no, 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 not a part of him. When it takes on flesh, you can harm the flesh because the flesh is is perishable. But then what, what has happened now is that when Christ... It's, a it's not a part of God because God doesn't have, doesn't have parts. It is simply a... a, a, a um, you said it's three distinct... Three, no, no, I, three distinct persons. They aren't parts because they wholly share what it means to be God. So a part is less than a whole. So the Father isn't less than the Son. The Son isn't less than the Father. The Father isn't less than the Spirit. They are they're all co-equal and co-eternal. Like Jesus is less than the Father because Jesus can be killed. Jesus no, no, no. So what, what you're seeing there is, is a mad matter of economy, right? Because Christ came as a human being and was a full human being and not a specter or a ghost or a superhuman, everything that can happen to a human being can also happen to Christ including death and, the, and he didn't come here by the way uh, to die for no reason we believe that the reason it happened was because man sinned in the garden of Eden and we believe that by sin came death because prior to this God's original intention for man was not to die and this is something that we believe that in the end of days when the new when the old earth and heaven has done away with a kingdom where nobody dies and we live forever will be ushered in that will reflect God's initial plan for humanity so because by the, the, the by, by the uh, by the hands of Adam sin and death enter the world for it to be taken away it also had to be done by a man a perfect man a man who is called the second Adam in the Bible Christ and he is the one who came and took the, the what we call the uh, keys of life and death from the devil meaning that if you believe in him then by believing in him letting him into our lives and letting him change the way we operate we can then become sons of God and then attain salvation We've been there already. Jesus also said in the Bible that you should pray in his name 
and he will give you anything you're looking for. Jesus said in the Bible that he's the Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus said in the Bible that he has authority to forgive sins on earth. Jesus said in the Bible that when two or three are gathered in his name, he is there in their midst. So he is talking as God and he is doing as God. So if they believe that he's a, like, like Jesus Christ is a Muslim, then Jesus Christ is doing shirk, 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 and more shirk. I don't believe he's doing that. So that must mean that what he is saying is true, as he is perfect, therefore he is God. There you go, my friends. What you believe in in the Quran, unfortunately, is a lie. Isa is not Jesus Christ. He's, he's like a, a perversion of Christ. That's, that's all. So unless you think that Isa or Christ is a liar, then the words he said in the Bible mean something. And to convict you. Ah, okay. Now, first of all, do we agree that in the Bible it says those things? Do we agree that in the Bible it says those things? I can show them to you. Where Christ says that you can pray in his name and whatever you pray, he will give to you. Right? Because now what we're doing is that we're cherry picking. We're choosing to submit to the parts where Christ said, the only true God is a father, or he prayed with his heaven before, but then we're not actually submitting to when he said and spoke with authority that you can pray to him. Why are we cherry picking? When it comes to the Holy Trinity, uh, when it comes to your faith, yes. um, well, actually, is it even a faith that you need to have to sort of believe in it, or is it purely logical? You, 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 you require faith, but absolutely, God gave us logic. So we can absolutely apply it. Like for example, uh, like the explanation behind the things of the Bible, you will not find directly inside the Bible. We, we, we can then apply our understanding of previous and past scripture to a verse. It's understanding not subjective though. Huh? It's understanding and interpretation uh, under, subjective. Understanding can certainly be subjective. But what we know is that we believe that the Spirit of God, that we can invite Him into our lives, and then He can guide us on the correct path. And luckily for us, we have an early church from 2,000 plus years ago, and they are the ones uh, who, who ensure that everything that it is that we have as doctrine today was accurate according to the apostles who were directly with Christ. So before we talk about the Bible being corrupted, do we accept that the things in the Bible are there? Is Jesus Christ saying these things about himself? For example, when he says something like, uh, whatever you ask me in my name, this I will do, that my Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do. Can anybody apart from God say this? Can, can Muhammad say it, for example? No. So, unless we're going to start cherry picking and saying, well, I don't believe in that verse because it sounds a little bit too, uh, too, uh, like too descriptive. Divine. If it's a divine for me, I'm going to go to the other words that sound, sound human. You can do that, but you're missing Christ. Yes, Christ was in the form of a human being, but also he is God. Anything else, my friends? Or are, are, are we... I, I, I want to ask you guys one question. To you, who is Christ? Who is he to you? And where, whatever he is to you, where are you getting the information from? Any one of you? Any one of you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but he was not the final prophet. And he says there will be a prophet coming after me. Okay. Okay. And do you know anything about Isa? Like, can you like tell me stuff about him? Um, like, tell me things, like lessons, like, like where he was, where he went, uh, who his disciples were, anything. I mean, I believe I can't tell you things without quoting okay. the Quran directly. Like, I mean, I mean, go ahead if you want to. You can. But I mean, there are most similarities only with some Christianity than you would think. There are not, in my personal opinion. There are. It's just that we don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay, right? But you we know in the. In but you know in the Quran, it tells you in, in uh, Surah 43, verse 61, that if Allah had a son, yeah, that Muhammad will have to, have to worship him, right? You know, that in the Quran. So, yeah, so, so it implies that if God does have a son, then that son has qualities worthy of worshiping. And I am telling you that Christ is the Son of God. So therefore, according to the logic in the Quran, because Christ himself says so. How do you know that? 
from the so, earliest manuscripts. Yeah. That, that, that's one way of knowing it. Okay. The earliest recorded documentation that we have of Christ has him claiming to be the Son of God. And has others also verifying this as well. People who also didn't believe in him and who did, did believe in him. So again, why are you cherry picking who Christ is? I'm just saying, yeah, no worries. I'm just saying, do you believe that the, the, the Bible has been altered over time? Okay, altered That's to, my issue. If the Bible okay. is the word of okay. God, Again, you should have the power to preserve before we it. Move there, yeah. Before we move there, yeah. can we admit that Christ does say these things that are divine in the Bible that we have no, today? Because I, this is my point. My point is, I, how can you trust the Bible if it's been altered over time? Okay, but you're, again, does the Bible that we have today say these things? About Christ. Let's start off with step one, and then we go. I, through. I don't know. I haven't read the Bible. Okay. Well, today, today is a lucky day. But I spoke to the guys over there, the the Christians over there, and they told me this. They said, and I don't know what this is. They said, I showed them a contradiction in the Old Testament, and they said, we don't follow the commandments of the Old Testament, which is a ceremonial book. Do you agree with that? Are you talking about the 10 or the 613? 613. So those are commands for the Jews. Let me explain very quickly. So God gave them 10 commandments to follow. But unfortunately, as humans do, they kept messing up. So you would have priests and Moses add additional commands to the 10 in order to negate things that they were doing at the time. Right? So as a Gentile or a non-Jew, these laws are there specifically to help the Jews follow the Ten Commandments. We don't need to abide to those laws, the ceremonial laws, because Christ has already come here. And by believing in Christ and following him, we will attain the perfection that the Ten Commandments and the Southern Thirteen Commandments were trying to drive the children of Israel to. Okay? So, this contradiction that you saw, what was it in the Old Testament? Uh, there were some verses about eating pork and drinking alcohol and that kind of thing. Okay. But my, it was more of a, I asked him, why are there contradictions there? Why don't you believe in them? And he says, we only believe the Ten Commandments, not the 613. Be because the 613 were for the Jews. They were additions to the Ten done by Moses to negate issues that they were having at the time with following the Ten. So you don't believe in the Old Testament? How does that... Does that is that what I said? Because I'm saying there are things clearly said in the Old Testament which you guys don't believe. So I'm saying you don't no. believe in the Old Testament. We accept, the we accept that these things are there. But as non-Jewish Gentiles, are they necessary for our salvation? The answer is no. So I don't negate that these things are in the Bible. Yes, they are there. Yes, for a time they were there to guide the children of Israel. The only time it was applicable was when Christ came and called out a universal call to all people, the Jews and the Gentiles. And then the early church had to figure out how does a Gentile come into the Jewish church? And that's when they were like, okay, well, let's get one thing straight. Christ is essential for salvation, not adherence to the old law. As an example, in the Quran, earlier on, alcohol is called a sign from Allah. Then later on, you're told you can't drink it. So because you don't, because you don't drink alcohol, does that mean you don't believe in the part of the Quran that says that the intoxicants from the vine are a sign from Allah? It doesn't mean no. you should drink it, huh? Huh? It doesn't mean you should drink well, it. Well, they're a sign from Allah. So no, 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 bad thing. It doesn't mean you can drink so, it. So wait, are signs from Allah negative things? Not necessarily, but that's taking out of context. Yeah, well, tell me. Just because it says it's a sign from Allah, and I'll need to check do your you verse. Do you know anything? Find. That doesn't mean it's saying you should drink it. Do you know anything that's a sign from Allah? Do you agree with me? Huh? Do you agree with me? Just because it says it's a sign doesn't mean you should drink it. it doesn't but mean it doesn't say drink you shouldn't drink it either, right? But it does. So, so on. later on, exactly. But show me a sign so where it says fact that you at one don't point, believe. You know, but, but I'm saying, show me a point where at the start it says you should drink alcohol, or you can. And later on, it says he doesn't. It that's doesn't. an explicit he verse fallacy. He doesn't need to do that. That's what you're saying. He's saying there's a contradiction. I'm no, saying no, there's no, he's no, saying that okay. there, there's a verse that seems to be implying, but from the base reading <laughs> of the text, that's your implication. That this seems to be a thing he can do. I've seen Muslims affirm this, by the way. Muslims said at the early point, it was permissible. It, even in the hadith, like, like uh, but beforehand, alcohol drinking was allowed until one day some men were drunk and stumbled into a mosque. And then, and then uh, the Rasulullah said that you couldn't drink anymore when you come into a mosque. Okay. So, so again, so, what's, so, what's so, so but my point is, paralleling the verse about the vine and the intoxicants being a sign from Allah with the 613 commands, because later on we have an addition 
It doesn't require us to follow the 613 the same way as you, with alcohol being banned later on. Because we realize that there's a change now in how we apply these laws, <laughs> no does change. that mean, I don't, I don't see does that, that, mean change, that you no longer believe in the Quran? No, no, no. But I, I don't see that as, a, as being a change. So why would it be called a sign from Allah? What does that mean? That doesn't mean you should drink What it. does that mean then? I'll need to see the verse in context, to be honest. But there's no contradiction. I didn't say I that. I'm asking you. But you're saying a change. A change implies there's, there's a contradiction or there's a change from something that was said before to after. Do you know anything that is a sign from Allah that, 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 that's a haram, for example? I'll need, to, I'll need to see the verse in okay. this context, to be honest. But I'm saying that doesn't mean that it's saying you should drink it. If you show me a verse which says you can drink and a verse eight which says you can't drink, fine, I'm with you. I don't believe you have that in the Quran, but that wasn't the point I was trying to raise. No, that's if, my point. if you so want I'm a contradiction, I can give you one. But I was simply telling you that at one point, something was seen as beneficial, as a sign from Allah. It, it is and then later on, it was discounted completely. No, 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 no that's not true. From my limited knowledge, okay. what I know is, um, it says in the Quran there are benefits to alcohol. But, right. okay. but overall, the negatives outweigh the benefits, and that's why it's not allowed to, to be I haven't seen that verse before, but maybe it's there. <laughs> overall. Okay. So that doesn't you, mean it, it's saying at one point you can drink it, at another point you can't. That's well, that's that, that's what your your, that. your later hadith tradition does rectify that. Unfortunately, it does say that for a time Muslims were drinking. Yeah. And then later, it was later abrogated and they couldn't okay. drink anymore. Okay. Okay. But why do I care about the actions of others? I care about the Quran. Perfect. Which is why when you look at the 613, yeah. you don't apply it to us Gentiles because we're not Jewish. There you go. What we need instead is belief in Christ. He taught himself the way, the truth, and the life. By the way, something no mere man can say. Muhammad can't say it. Buddha can't say it. Uh, but who, else, who else is there? Um, Krishna can't say it, for example, only only God can. Because that would mean, if you, say, for example, if you had Muhammad saying this, that would mean that Muhammad would then be taking one of the names of Allah for himself. Al-Haq, the truth, which he can't do. Okay, but you, I, I see your point, but the point about alcohol wasn't really that conclusive. If you show me clear as day, fine. For example, I showed the gentleman over there the verse in the Old Testament saying, Ye shall not eat of the carcass of the swine. Who's they? You, me or you know, Zeus? A guy called Richard. No, but who's they? He's me a, he's or Christian. the Zeus? He's a, not you. He's a Christian. No, no, no. no. I can show you the you same verse. You said they shall not eat. Who is the they? Is it me or the Jews? I, I can show you the verse. It was. In the it's the Jews. So you're saying you don't care about those 613? I care about Christ. Okay. And because I have Christ, again, I care about Christ because I have Christ. I only need to abide by the 613, I abide by Christ.